Grace and peace, love and mercy from God our Father, through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to our daily devotion, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I am Pastor Clint Poppy. The Bible reading for today, the Old Testament reading for Trinity Sunday, Isaiah 6, 1-7. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to the other, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory, and the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having his hand a burning coal, and he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the year that King Uzziah died, this is how Isaiah chapter 6 begins. We have a crisis we have a political crisis. We have a national crisis. Why? Because the king is dead. And when the king is dead, who's in control? My friends, take a look around. Pretty easy to connect the dots here, isn't it? We look at the world. We look at our country. We look at our nation's capital, our state capital, and we wonder who is in control. No, the king isn't dead, but all kinds of crazy things are happening in our world. We have a worldwide pandemic. Can we go outside? Should we stay inside? The World Health Organization says one thing. The Center for Disease Control says another. Our governor says one thing. Our mayor says another. Who's in control? What do we believe? We turn on the news. We look at rioting going on. Washington, D.C., New York City, Chicago, Minneapolis, Omaha, Lincoln. Seems bizarre and crazy. Every day we see, is there a curfew tonight or is there not a curfew tonight? And it doesn't really seem to matter because only the law-abiding citizens actually pay attention to the curfew. So, who's in control? My friends, in Isaiah's day, when King Uzziah was dead, in our day, when things are in turmoil, whether it be because of disease or political unrest or for any other reason, God's word is clear. Isaiah teaches us, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne. My friends, God is sitting on the throne. No matter what you see in the world, no matter what trouble or issue there is, no matter how you feel deep inside your heart, God is on the throne. God is in control. The thrice holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is in complete control of all things. Thus says the Lord. We sometimes worry about the things that are going on in the world. We have a national election coming up in a few months. 
We worry about how bad things will get as this plays itself out in our homes, in our streets, in our country. We think about the coronavirus. Will there be a second wave? Will the new normal be the new normal? We worry about these things. And God teaches us that he is in control. And he is in control especially with our greatest need. And my friends, our greatest need has nothing to do with politics. Our greatest need has nothing to do with finances or worldwide economy. Our greatest need has nothing to do with our health. Our greatest need has to do with our sinful condition, our sinful nature, the sins that we commit. This is our greatest problem and this is our greatest need. And the message of the church, the true church, is to point this out in season and out of season. Isaiah was worried. The king was dead. Who's in control? And all of a sudden he sees very, very clearly that God is on the throne and God is in control. Okay? He sees the angels flying around the six winged seraphs singing their praises holy 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 is the lord god almighty and then it dawns on isaiah god is holy but isaiah is not my friends god is holy you are not i am not there is no one righteous no not one god's word is clear we are all sinners We've gone our own way. We've gone astray. The wages of sin is death. We cannot save ourselves. Isaiah, in his desperation, cries out, Woe is me, for I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah knows clearly that it is impossible for an unholy person to look upon a thrice holy God and live. And so what does God do? Does he vaporize Isaiah? No. Does he teach him a stern lesson and make him go home and work out his own salvation? Does he cut his tongue out because of all of his sin from his unclean lips? No. In God's love and grace and mercy, he sends one of the angels to the altar, to the altar of God. The angel picks up a hot burning coal from the altar. And he takes that burning coal and he places it right where Isaiah needs it. Isaiah has just confessed his sin of being a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. And so God brings that hot coal to his lips. Not to harm him or punish him, but to heal him and forgive him. And God, through the angel, says, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin atoned for. My friends, this is not a parable. This is not hyperbole. This is not some pie-in-the-sky hope. This is how God works. We're sinners. We sin with our hands, with our feet, with our eyes, with our lips, with our ears. We are tainted with sin. We deserve nothing but eternal separation from God in the fires of hell. But God in his great love and mercy has sent his son into the world through his perfect life, obedient death, and glorious resurrection. Forgiveness, life, and salvation has been won for the whole world, full and free. And now God distributes that salvation. He delivers the deliverance through pastors. Trust me, your pastor is no angel. 
But he has been given the angelic task of delivering to you the forgiveness of sins. Which sins are dragging you down? Which sins are causing you to despair? Which sins are driving you in worry and fear? Which sins keep you awake at night? My friends, Christ has bled and died for that sin. And today, I bring the burning fire, the burning coal of forgiveness, life, and salvation earned by Jesus, delivered in the waters of holy baptism. I bring that to you and place it exactly where it hurts, exactly where it is needed, exactly where God wants it. My friends, through Jesus, through his person and his work, your sin is atoned for. Your guilt is removed. God is in complete control of the world, and more importantly, God is in complete control of your sin. It's gone. Washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Cling to this good news today and tomorrow and always. And through the blood of Jesus, you will live not only today, but forever with him. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. We pray now the litany. Lutheran Service Book, page 288, page 288. O Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. O Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. O Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. O Christ, hear, hear us. us. God the Father in heaven, have, have mercy. mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have, have mercy. mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare, Spare us, us, good Lord. Lord. Be gracious to us. Help, Help us, us, good Lord, Lord, from all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death, Good, Good Lord, deliver us by the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, Help, Help us, us, good, good Lord, Lord, in all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment. Help us, good, good Lord. Lord. We poor sinners implore you to, to hear us, O Lord, Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit, we implore you to hear us, good Lord, to raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child 
and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all, we implore you to hear us, good Lord, to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to tur turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, Grant, Grant us, us your, your peace. peace. O Christ, hear, hear us. us. O Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. O Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. O Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, in this earthly life we endure sufferings and death before we enter into eternal glory. Grant us grace at all times to subject ourselves to your holy will and to continue steadfast in the true faith to the end of our lives, that we may know the peace and joy of the blessed hope of the resurrection of the dead and of the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful, and the strength of the weak. May the prayers of those who in any tribulation or distress cry to you graciously come before you, so that in every situation they may recognize and receive your gracious help, comfort, and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ever-present Lord, you have promised never to leave us nor forsake us, but to abide with us to the end of time. Grant that those who live alone may not be lonely, but find comfort both from your promises and fulfillment in loving you and their neighbors all their days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, give us grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. In mercy, Put an end to the epidemic that afflicts us. Grant relief to those who suffer and comfort all who mourn. Sustain all medical personnel in their labors and cause your people to ever serve you in righteousness and holiness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.